one of the stars of the show is Shelley King, and I'm also very pleased to say she's joining me now. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Oh, likewise. And thank you for the tour of the theatre. To get here, we had to uh, kind of do a bit of mountain climbing, really, yeah, didn't we? Indeed, yes. I get more exercise backstage than I do on, but there you go. I mean, you know, it's an old theatre, so... Um, oh, sorry about that. It's an old theatre, so it's sort of many, many corridors up and down and round, and um, but it keeps you fit. It's very good for the buttocks muscles. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yes. <laughs> now, this theatre, for about 15 years, was uh, used by Starlight Express, mm -hmm. and it had a huge transformation when they got rid of it and put this show on, and the mm -hmm. theatre is looking amazing now, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's, I mean, it's an, it was originally a cinema, and it's been restored to all its sort of... 20s art deco glory which is great particularly for the Bollywood film scene because it is it takes you back it's Hollywood in the old days that's what Bollywood is now you know and it's fantasy and it's colors and it's pinks and greens and lights and I think it, I think it's a wonderful theater to have this it's also it's also when you're on stage although it holds 2,000 people it feels quite it feels quite close in, in, in a strange way it is difficult in that you can't hear the audience in this theater so that's quite annoying because um, my character Kitty particularly works with an audience, so you have to get used to there are certain space, certain places on the stage that you can't hear people. So you've got to get once you get used to it, and that's fine. But it's an, it's a nice atmosphere, you know. This was a very interesting show to put on because, as you say, it's about Bollywood and it's about uh, Asian films. It's about Andrew Lloyd Webber being part of a new radical musical, and it's been criticised and it's been applauded. And I think more people are saying that it's a great musical than a bad one. Mm -hmm. That must have been nervous for you in the beginning because this is probably the most risky musical that's ever been launched in the West End, really, isn't it? Well, I, sp I suppose it is, but I, I, I also think, though, that... that Indian music or Asian music generally is, has been so influential in our global society in the past few years particularly that people are more attuned to it than they think I mean you know it's over half the population that are used to these rhythms you know and you know Indian food is the most popular in this whole country you go into Indian restaurants you hear music so subliminally one one's ear is already tuned to this music so it isn't as alien as you might think in fact even modern day pop groups are all using them. We've had them since John Lennon. John Lennon was using them, you know, in, 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 the, in the 60s. So, uh, and Freddie Mercury, your queen, uses them all the time. I'm not plugging in, you know, an alien <laughs> show. But, um, but yeah, so you, I, I think it's wrong for people to think that, that they're going to come in and, and listen to something that they're totally unused to. Actually, they're, they're rhythms that people are very familiar with. They're rhythms of the body and the heart. So, I mean, but it is, I mean, it's, I suppose it is, I suppose it is courageous in that, in that, People like, particularly in musical land, people like to get what they know. And they think they don't know this, but I'm telling them that they do know it because they will have heard the music before. They will have heard, they will be used to the rhythms. Perhaps not, you know, in, in musicals like My Fair Lady, but certainly in their everyday lives, they will be used to the rhythms of this music. I, I think, think what people forget is that Bollywood churns out far more movies every year than Hollywood ever has done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, now you can go to any high street anywhere in the country and there will be Bollywood mu musicals playing. Any video shop has a Bollywood rack. It's not specifically for any minority area of the community. It, it's, it's there everywhere. And it's fantasy and it's entertaining. You know, and Hollywood was at its most successful at a time of Great Depression. And forgive me, I think that we are in a time of Great Depression now and we need fantasy as well as those movies that stir us and move us. We do need to be, you know, taken away from ourselves. And I think that, that this particularly does that and Bollywood does that and this musical does that. And in the kindest way, I think this is wonderfully over top, the costumes, the lighting, the set. It, it's great and it's a feel-good show, isn't it? It is a feel-good show. It is. And, um, I, I, but I also think that it, that it, it, does, it does look at... You, you know, fairly emotive um, uh, issues. It does look at the slums. Perhaps, you know, obviously not, not in great depth. In, I mean, not in the way that a, that, that a documentary film would. But it makes you aware that there is poverty, you know. I mean, uh, I'm talking about p p perhaps my character, Kitty, who is, who is a, a commentator on, on the action. And she is destroyed by Holly, by Bollywood, rather, because she fights against it. And, her, and she can't keep her mouth shut. So you gradually see her go, I mean, it's a cameo character, but you can see that, that this huge industry has an effect on people. Rani, who's, the, who's wonderfully played by Aisha Tarka, her character is getting older, although she's not getting older, but in terms of Bollywood, she does, and she disappears. So there is pathos. You know, the ending is, is happy, but there's a question mark. So it's, I think it, it, it actually does cover 
all situations. It's not just sort of, you know, go there and forget everything. You, it does remind you subtly, but you come out, I think, feeling, you know, great and smiley and happy and stirred by the music and the rhythms. And, you know, the drummers are wonderful. I think they stir me every time I hear them, you know, and the Cavallis and Chaya Chaya, which is a great number that many people will know already because it's a very famous um, uh, musical number that Rahman wrote. Um, before and used in a, a movie before which he's reworked for this you know so we're going to talk more about the show in depth in a moment and more about your character and more about your career but we're going to take a piece of music now and proof of the pudding that Asian music and Indian music is still good and popular anywhere in the world is Shakalaka Baby because it's in the charts it's, it's doing very well on, on radio airplay and it's a great great song isn't it Oh, it's wonderful. It's got all the rhythms and it's got, I mean, beautiful, to, I mean, visually stunning if you see it. And, and it, can, you cannot help, it's just you want, to, you want to move to it and, and dance to it and scream to it and laugh to it. I think it's wonderful. I don't really look, well, in fact, I think we're going to put it into our curtain call. We've just been working that in today because um, we find, I mean, you, I don't think, I think people in the street just know Shakalaka. The most extraordinary people, you know, my, my, my aunts, you know, older, old friends suddenly said, oh, I know, it's Shakalaka Baby. I thought, what? <laughs> you know, I didn't expect that. But I think, I think people, I, I, I heard it on Victoria Station. I actually heard a phone going, dee, 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 oh, We've arrived. This is it, you know. So, yeah, I, I think it's wonderful. And for that number alone, it's worth a visit. And Prayer Khalid as well, what can I say? Stunning, gorgeous, and in a most amazing voice. The best that you will hear on the West End, undoubtedly. A great, great voice and a wonderful talent. Oh, she's one, I mean, she's, she's just extraordinary. She just opens her mouth in this extraordinary, rich, and a perfect, pitch perfect sound comes out. It's I sickening, mean, really, isn't I it? No. <laughs> I think Kitty must hate her. No. Um, no, Kitty's always wanted to be Shirley Bassey, Eartha Kitt, and Judy Garland, but they never had them in, in, in Mumbai, so she, she's been fighting a losing battle. Um, but yeah, Priya is wonderful, and, and Raza, and, um, you know, moves wonderfully, sings wonderfully. Aisha Tarka, who's an absolutely captivating dancer and actress and has done many films as you probably know monsoon wedding and um the terrorist and things like that and um i mean the whole cast and the company who are the stars the actual ensemble they never stop for two and a half hours they never stop they don't even stop during during the interval they're changing their wigs are changing and without the energy of the company those you know 35 girls and boys who are there constantly we wouldn't have a musical so I mean I think we're so lucky and we all get on well together which is the most important thing wonderfully camp and <laughs> over the top oh yes you've got to have a camp character in a musical and um, yeah she's a gossip columnist who's been around for many many years and we find her at the moment of a I mean she's also a frustrated political journalist this is the problem with Kitty so she can't keep her mouth shut and um, we're, all of us, we work so well together, particularly the boys and girls who are on all the time. I really must emphasize that because without them, you wouldn't have a show. But are you making it up? I mean, there must be some bitching somewhere. You must hate somebody. Come on. No, I really don't. I'd <laughs> love to find, I'd love to find somebody to bitch about, but I honestly can't. Very unusual for an actor. I'm sure that I, I, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll take a rain check on that one and come yeah. back. We don't have time to bitch. <laughs> we honestly don't have time because it's a new musical. And when you're doing a new musical or any new piece of work in theatre, you've got to keep working at it. And, um, you know, and, and you've got 50 people on stage, you know, with the swings. The swings are people who cover everybody in the chorus and in, in, in the ensemble. And, um, you know, you've got another 30 40 people backstage working the mechanics of the show so the smallest change takes the longest time to get perfect because it can be dangerous you know it can be dangerous if 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 a, if a flat comes down at the wrong time if one person doesn't know what they're doing it can endanger the lives and of three or four people so so we haven't stopped working on the show is what i'm saying really we we are in the understudies are certainly in every day and we're constantly reworking numbers trying to make them better trying to you know think about as as you would in any new piece of work a new musical is still a new play it's a new piece of theater and the more you do it in front of audiences the more you learn about how you can do it better and you have to you have to keep improving it you can't just say oh no i'm, I'm i think i've done that now you know i can just come in on a wednesday and do it so um and that's exciting that's and so you don't have time to bitch at people because you're always there 
getting on with it, you know, and going home, going to sleep and coming in and doing it the next day. Since you got the contract, has it been like a whirlwind? Because has it moved very quickly? Has it been learning the script, learning the music, coming in, doing rehearsals and then finally getting on stage? Yeah, well, I was, I'm very lucky. I mean, this, this whole thing's been going on for about two years, the setting up of, of Bombay Dreams. And I haven't, I've never really been a musical theatre person. I've you know, I've been working as a classical actor and on, on theatre, and I just—I mean, I've known Mira for many, many years, um, um, and I knew she was writing this. And I just saw Stephen last September, Stephen Pimlock, the director, and um, and was sort of penciled in, and then offered the week after. And I didn't—it it wasn't anything I expected, and I'm very proud to be in it. But it honestly, wasn't anything I've ever expect—I'd ever ex have expected to do. And. Um, and then I waited rather a long time from to September to January because one never knows with these projects, you know, that when we're talking about so many millions of pounds, dollars, anything might be cancelled at any time. So, so I was very glad when it all finally happened and we began rehearsals. But since rehearsals have started, it has been a whirlwind and things have been changing daily and, and you know, Mir has been writing new things. I mean, the, the Miss World sequence that I particularly, that Kitty is a part of, um, has changed sort of seven times during the the previews, um, so and that's quite frightening because you're one one works on it in the after, in the afternoon and then you have to do it to two thousand people at night and two thousand people who have paid money to see you do it well. So you can't sort of go on and rehearse half-heartedly. You have to give it whatever you can, as you know, doubly what. 100 plus to, to make it work and because you're trying new stuff you have to the only way you can work I think particularly in musical theatre which is about communicating directly with an audience you cannot do it in rehearsal you have to have the audience to try it out on so that that's been very frightening and and then we opened as you know on the 19th of June and I thought in my sort of old national theatre way that then we'd settle down and we'd sort of do the play every but no you know, as I said before, this is a new play and and we're learning new things from new audiences every single day. So I think, you know, we will never stop working on it. We never stop working on it. I, I don't know when we will, six, uh, six months, ten months, I don't know. But as I say, the Miss World sequence has changed. It might change again. Various sequences might change again. But, but I, and some people, I think, quite wrongly say that this is this is a lack of faith in the original product. I think that's ridiculous. I think that, you know, when, you, when an artist paints a picture, he or she continually changes it, takes the colors away, adds new colors. You can't, one is never satisfied with a, with a piece of, with a piece of theater, with a piece of art. You have to be flexible about it, you know. And especially such an exciting and big production like this where everything from the costumes, the lighting, the scenery, there's so many things that can be changed and can go wrong and can be done better, I suppose. Yes, of course. I mean, the more you learn about, yes, as you say, the technical pieces of equipment, the better you can use them. When you learn to use them better, you change the dances, you change the dialogue numbers, everything changes around it. Of course, you can't just, it would be unfair to the public to come and to ask them to come and see a, a show that, that you've done, you know, two months before just because it's easier, you know. You've learned from them, they've given you a chance, and that you've got to take up the sort of challenge and, and gauntlet and go for it. And I think that's great. I love that, you know. In a moment from now, we're going to take another piece of music, and I'm also going to talk to, about, talk to you about your waterworks. No, no, don't, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> but before that, I want to talk about the, the names that have worked on this project. A.R. Rahman, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and as you say, Mira Sayal. Couldn't get really bigger names for musical theatre. I mean, A.R. Rahman has wrote some incredible, incredible pieces of music for, for Bollywood. Mm -hmm. Andrew Lloyd Webber, well, we don't need to say anything about him. And Mira say, oh, goodness gracious me, the comedy side of it and mm -hmm. the Kumars at 42. Just incredible, isn't it? Yes, I mean, you know, as I say, I've known Mira for many, many years. And, you know, we've, we've, we did a play called Film, Film, Film in the mid 80s, which was, um, which was a Bollywood musical um, based around the, the story of, of King Lear. And I played Rehana, the Reagan character, and she played um, uh, Baby, who was the Cordelia character. So, I mean, and, and at that time she hadn't really begun writing, but she would do a few sketches. And I remember reading a very early draft of a, of a first play with some friends, and it was hysterical. And then she did a one-woman show, and I've just watched her going from strength to strength. And it's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful to see 
to see that happening to a friend, you know. She's truly amazing, isn't she? Such yeah. a talent. Yeah, I mean, and it's and it's great again working with her after so so long because we know each other. We know each other's rhythms just personally. So she knows the things that she knows the things that I find funny, and I know I know I know something of how she looks at stuff. So working together, I think, has been a it's been really good and. For me, made Kitty such a joy, if that a joy she can be called, I suppose. Yes, yes. Well, she's certainly an interesting character. And we're at the Apollo Victoria today, talking to Shelley King, who plays Kitty. And your character's marvellous. Some amazing frocks, and what a wig! My, it's, it's in the wig. It, it's horizontally not at all challenged. I mean, it, it depends on how how my the, the the lady who dresses my wig feels that day. I mean, she's so wonderful, and, and sometimes she's she's sort of like two foot across, and sometimes she's you know about two foot high and the wig that is not the lady who dresses it <laughs> and uh, I mean yeah it is a character in itself I think it should be a publicity stunt I should go through the streets of London saying danger wide load Bombay dreams you know but yes I mean and the costumes are designed by Mark Thompson are absolutely glorious and a delight to wear and so well camp and, and colorful and and also traditional you know there's everything there is that that campery that people associate with musicals but there's also there's also some wonderful traditional Rajasthani um, uh, Rajasthani work that, that Mark has done when he's been out in India so costumes that he's copied from Rajasthani original Rajasthani designs you know so it's a wonderful combination which we again like the music we in fashion have that you're going to walk down any high street and you will see things that actually come and are influenced by Indian Chinese you know, African fashions. I mean, we think of these things because we live, we do live in a global society. And, 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 and this musical show, I mean, this particular Mark has taken from all, so he's taken from British, he's taken from British Asian, he's taken from Rajasthan, he's taken, you know, from Pakistan and, and brought it all together. And it's, and Kitty, God knows where she's from, but I think <laughs> she's somewhere, she's, as I said, she's, she's, she's stuck in, in Busby Barclay somewhere, you know, <laughs> trying very hard to be in Bombay, but, uh, you know, actually being in Beverly Hills, poor thing. <laughs> Shelley King, it's been an honor and a pleasure really talking to you today. Thank you so much for sparing us the time. It's an amazing musical. It's the newest musical. It's the biggest musical, Bombay Dreams. An incredible, incredible budget, wasn't there, for this musical? Yes, so I believe. No, no, of course there was. I mean just to get anything i mean just to have a cast this size and to have and to have to renovate this theater and do to completely change it in the way that it's had to be changed since starlight of course i mean i mean of course it would be a huge amount of money but you know it's it's an investment i suppose i don't know about money i'm just an actor i just sit here and earn a crust every so often well i think you earn every penny that's what i say and i think you deserve a pay rise for talking to me today if nothing else thank you very much do tell andrew <laughs> shelly kick thank you very much live today at bombay dreams concluding our tour of the west end thank you to all the theaters that have taken to par and middle and mainline who have helped our winners get down to the theaters we're at the apollo theater today bombay dreams is the new musical come down and see it and thank you once again shelly thank you very much bye for now bye